Thanks for joining us for KBOY 2 News Midday. I'm Kelsey Anderson. Now to your top 11 stories at 11 o'clock. Two teens are arrested after a home invasion in Parma. Canyon County deputies say the young men forced their way into a home with rifles and masks and ordered the woman inside to lie on the ground. She was able to escape and called police. Deputies were able to find the teens a short time later. You're looking at 18 year old Jacob Gibney of Boise. He's booked into the Canyon County Jail charged with robbery and burglary. A 17 year old from notice is booked into a juvenile detention center charged with robbery and burglary as well. The FAA is continuing to investigate a plane's emergency landing on I-84. Thankfully, no one was hurt when a Boise pilot landed near the orchard exit. Authorities say the plane was on its way from Spokane to the Boise airport when its engine failed. The owner of the aircraft company told the Associated Press the pilot had enough fuel but forgot to switch fuel tanks and couldn't reach the runway in time. A community meeting was held for those living near the Walker Fire, which continues to burn between Grimes Creek and Idaho City. Officials say Idaho City is too far away from the Walker Fire at this time to be evacuated or even worry. Fire managers believe the fire has scorched between 2,800 and 3,400 acres, but more accurate mapping is needed. Cleared up, we weren't going to be able to do a uh, flight to do a GPS. But once we get the infrared flight, especially, then we'll have a better idea of the acres. The Walker fire is believed to be human caused. Two streets in downtown Boise have a new traffic pattern as of this morning. So heads up here 13th Street from Main to State and 14th Street from Front to State are being converted from a one-way to two-way roads. Motorists are urged to use caution while adjusting to these new changes. And also today, crews will begin construction at exit 26 on I-84. That exit leads to notice in Parma. The I-84 ramps and the U.S. 2026 interchange are closed. Crews are repaving the ramps and resurfacing other areas. Drivers can expect closures until the end of October. A new, new proposal may help the West Ada School District fund future growth. It's known as a school capacity fee. One trustee says it's a concept used in other states that could help one of the fastest growing school districts in Idaho. When cities and counties approve new commercial or residential developments, the school district would collect a fee. The school district will charge a fee at the point of the building permit and that fee then would go into a sinking fund, a reserve fund, that could be used to buy sites, to help build a school, perhaps even to operate a school. Last night's meeting was just an introduction of the idea to the other board members. The details of this year's proposal are still being sorted out. An Idaho man is behind bars after biting another man. The Post Register reports Matthew Wade of Shelley bit the man and then attempted to bite the responding deputy. He's now booked into county jail facing several charges including battery and resisting arrest. A Meridian fourth grader received some very good news. She is going to appear on the show The Doctors. She's in LA this week filming. Callie suffered a stroke after birth, which left her with no muscle tone on the left side of her face. She's had one surgery already and needs a second in December. Her GoFundMe page has raised more than $22,000. And it's back to the campaign trail for the Democratic presidential hopefuls. Candidates faced off last night in the first Democratic debate. We'll have a recap of the night coming up in just minutes. And Republican presidential candidate Carly Fiorina is speaking in eastern Idaho today. Fiorina will hold a brief town hall with Melaleuca employees in Idaho Falls. The health products company is owned by CEO Frank Vandersloot, who is a GOP mega donor. Vandersloot has previously listed Fiorina as one of the presidential candidates he's favoring. And it will cost $67 million to rehab the land scorched by the soda fire. A federal plan to rehabilitate the 436 square miles burned this past August calls for that spending over the next five years. Land, the land contains important sage grouse habitat and grazing land for ranchers. The rehab plan includes plantings of grasses, forbs and shrubs.